what's going on y'all so listen i've been saying i was gonna do this video for like months i've been saying i was gonna do this video but today i decided to i because it's been a while since i did story time so today i'm giving you a story time that you actually asked for and i'm finally giving it to you right so let's talk about it let's talk about my ife no my ifa initiation ife is my name ifa my ifa initiation so you see i got my bracelet um and i was initiated in ifa so now let me tell you how it happened so when i was living in atlanta i was going through like this big spiritual journey i was going through this big like moment in life and i have been practicing a lot of things based on stuff that i learned from a previous relationship and from friends that were kind of putting me on to certain things and stuff that you know god was kind of directing me into and so i met this girl and she was like you know you need to do your initiation into ifa and so i kind of battled it back and forth um one because it cost and i really didn't have the money at that time um two i was just kind of like battling back and forth with it so you know finally spirit spoke to me and said you need to do your initiation right and so when spirit told me to do my initiation i said okay i opened myself up to it and then i i got a client Oop, i got a client and i got the money so i decided hey you know what let me go ahead and do my initiation now, i did it in atlanta georgia which actually stone mountain georgia um and so i was like it wasn't a baba lawu from nigeria from africa it was a baba from chicago but i didn't know you know i didn't really know much about ifa um i just knew that you know it was becoming like this big thing in atlanta so i was like okay you know i know the benefits of spirituality i know the benefits of rituals i know the benefits of manifestation manifesting things i know the benefits of magic i know the benefits of working with orishas and working with your ancestors so i was like okay you know what spirit told me to do it so i'm gonna do it so i called the girl hey boo i'm ready to do it so she was like you ready ready I was like, yes, I'm ready to do it. So we set the date and it was on and popping. So she told me to get a few things to get ready for the initiation, which she came and helped me create my elect aid. So I had all my elect aids. Um, and then also she told me I needed to get all white. So I got all white for the ceremony and we was on and popping. And I think it was like 250. So I came, I went to go do my initiation we drove out to this big house in stone mountain and when i got there it was this man from chicago an older man probably like in about his 60s and he had a bunch of wives and a bunch of kids now it was so crazy to where his grandson was older than his son he had a bunch of wives and they were all you know light-skinned beautiful women but he had a bunch of wives right okay so i'm thinking like this is you know that's a thing it, it don't really apply to me right so I go and the first thing he said was we need to do your reading now granted normally when i do readings it's me and the person it's a private affair right but he did the reading in the room with my friend who brought me my son her mama and a bunch of other people right so i was like okay this is kind of weird so he did my reading and when he did my reading um he said you know who do y'all think her mother is now in my mind i said oh shoom right and I felt like I put it into his mind. And he was like, oh, shoo. So then um, he said, well, who's her father? Now, mind you, he's asking everyone in the room. Like, how you how you asking them who they think my spiritual father is, you know? So in my mind, I said, Shango. I put Shango in his mind. He said, Shango. So I was like, okay, we're going we gonna to keep, we gonna keep going because maybe, you know, spirit want me to connect with him. But I don't think he realized that. I was spiritually as strong as I was because a lot of people that go into this religion or this, you know, this spirituality or this spiritual group, they're weak. They're looking for something. Me, I wasn't weak. I wasn't looking for something. I went because spirit told me to go, right? So I wasn't like weak looking for an answer because realistically, when I need to get my answers and when I need to communicate with spirit and when I need to communicate with my ancestors and my Orishas, I've been doing it for years. So I pretty much knew what to do. But anyway, we're going to keep going. So he did my reading and he said a couple things that didn't sit well with me. The first thing was he called me a red bone. Now, for those, my son was there too, and he didn't like that. For those who don't know, when you call a woman a red bone, 
That means you attracted to her. That means you trying to get with her because the only time men would say red bone to me is when they was trying to get at me. So I'm like, what, what he called me red bone? Then he said, oh, you're going to marry a Baba, Baba Lau. You're supposed to marry a Baba. And I was like, okay. But then I'm looking at all his wives look like me. They were older versions of me, but they look like me. And I'm like, what? So I'm supposed to marry a you with all these wives? I know spirit ain't tell you that because I'm 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 not that type of person to be married to a man that got five, six, seven wives and 20 kids. That's not me. It's not my personality. Not to say that it's, you know, it's not for everybody. I'm, I'm one of the people that it's not for. It's for some people, but it's not for me. So I was like, okay. So then at that particular point, I wanted to move to California, right? And there was like this guy that I was kind of looking at and kind of seeing maybe, you know, things could work out. And he was like, no, you can't move. You got work to do here. And I was like, okay, you know, you can't really tell me what to do, but okay, spirit saying I ain't moving right now, then I'm gonna go with it. But if it's you saying it, then I know you on some bullshit. So we did the reading and he was like, okay, we're gonna do the ceremony. So I'm thinking because I'm paying him the Baba that he's gonna be doing the ceremony. No, the ceremony that was done was done by my friend who brought me her mama and his wife, right? So cool. I'm still thinking like, you know, maybe she's certified. She a high priestess. She could do it well, whatever. So they take me upstairs into their house because it was at a house. It wasn't at no farm or no sacred type place. They take me. I'm not going to discuss the actual ceremony because um, spirit doesn't kind of want me to discuss what actually happened as far as like the steps of the ceremony but i will say i did the ceremony and i was waiting to feel something and i didn't really feel what i felt um what i thought i was gonna feel like i thought i was gonna be like the ceremony i was gonna just be this like awakening and this new person and new thoughts was gonna come to my mind no but i i did this i did the ceremony you know upstairs um in the bathroom and then we had to go downstairs and I had to go and honor the Orishas in his basement one by one. So when I went down there, they had me doing all of these steps on how to honor Oshun and you do this for Shango and do this for Oya and you do this for Abatala and you do this for Ogun and you do this and do that. But I wasn't a, like, they wasn't really teaching me. They wasn't really like giving me the full steps, like the full, full, full logistics, you know? Like, I was just like going through the motions, basically. It was kind of like, okay, bow here. I bow. They didn't tell me why I was bowing or made sure that I remembered. It was just like, bow here. Do this. Do that. So I did it, you know, because I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm new to this and spirit told me to do this. So there was a reason why I was supposed to do this. So I didn't second guess it. I just went through with the motion because spirit made the money available to me to do this. So I'm just like, you know what? Spirit told me I need to do it. We're going to do what spirit said. So I did the ceremony. And then afterwards he told me, you know, okay, you're supposed to be a high priestess and you know, you got to do your other ceremony. So we'll reconvene on that. And I was like, okay, just let me go back. I just did this. You know, let me go back and kind of reassess how everything is. And then I'll get back to you, right? So mind you, because he read me, he said he said that he seen money all around me, right? Now, granted, I mean, I don't look broke. You know what I'm saying? And I don't try to look broke. Um, and I do believe that abundance is my birthright. And I've always, you know, been able to just, you know, survive. I haven't been in a situation where I've been too messed up financially. You know, even if I feel like I'm about to be messed up financially, God always blesses me or put me in a position to make money. So when he told me that he seen money around me, I didn't think nothing of it. I was just like, okay, good. That's confirmation. You know what I'm saying? I'm with the money team. You know what I'm saying? Abundance is my birthright. So I went home, you know, I had to wear my white and I went through all of that. Now, one thing that he did tell me too, that kind of stuck with me because I've been used to burning candles and doing my own thing. And so they told me that when you initiate to Ifa, you can't burn your own candles. And I'm like, what are you saying? That's how I got the money to pay you. Like, what are you talking about? So that was kind of like a, like, why can I do this? You know, but I was like, whatever, I'm gonna still do what I got to do because that's what I do. That's how I maintain out here. 
So when I came back home, you know, after doing the ritual, I went through my white and, you know, I was just feeling, I was feeling my, kind of feeling my high, I had my leggays, I was wearing my leggays, people was coming up to me saying, Alafia, and I was loving it. So then it came to the point where he hit me because he knew I was in the industry and he had a Haitian couple and he was like, you know, I want you to do PR for my son and a couple other people in the tribe. And I'm like, are y'all going to pay me? Like this, you want me to do this for free? Like you think you got to, you initiated in-house publicist? I'm not with that. Like I just, it just didn't feel right. So then he told me, you know, you need to do your initiation, your um, Oshun initiation, high priestess, whatever, right? So I was like, okay. So I'm like, I, I know how much my girl paid. Now my girl paid like three, four hundred dollars, right? And so, um, and then like the whole process was like fifteen hundred dollars for her. So I said, let me know how much it is. If that's what I'm supposed to do, if spirit say I'm supposed to do it, I'm gonna do it. This man called me and tell me that the big ancestors told him seven thousand. I said, the big ancestors. Who is the big ancestor? So the, the big ancestors is bigger than my, like who is the big ancestors that's telling you to pay you 7,000? Where am I gonna get, I didn't even have the 7,000. And if I had 7,000, I'm not giving you, if I had 20,000, I'm not giving you 7,000. I would have had to have 250,000 for me to give you 7,000. That's just how my mind works. Cause I'm not gonna spend my last on you. Like if I, if I make 10,000, then okay, I can spend a thousand, right? But if I make ten thousand, I'm not spending seven thousand. I'm matter of fact, I'm, I'm not even gonna spend fifteen hundred. Like that's how my mind works, you know. I be thinking, let me make sure I keep more than I spend, you know, for rainy days or whatever. And so when he told me the seven thousand, I was like, okay. So I didn't even tell him I wasn't gonna pay it. I felt like spirit was should have told spirit would have told him that I didn't have the money. Or I wasn't going to pay that. And so he tried to pressure me. He was like, oh, I got this uh, this couple that's doing the initiation today. So if you want to get started today, you know, you could come today. And he's like, and don't tell nobody how much I charge you. The ancestors don't want, don't want nobody else to know, right? And I'm like, okay, you know. So I didn't call him back. I actually blocked his number because he kept calling me saying, oh, we got another initiation today and you need to come today. And I feel like he was trying to sell me. Like, <laughs> how you going to hustle a hustler? That was my thing. Like the answers they tell you I'm a hustler. You can't hustle a hustler. You cannot. Even though I might seem nice, I might <laughs> smile. You can't hustle me because I, I'm trying to think how I'm going to hustle you at the end of the day, like realistically, you know, so um, I didn't do it. I just, I just, it didn't feel right for me. Right. And so, um, the girl who had initiated me, I kind of like bagged away cause she was like caught like with this man, you know what I'm saying? Her, her mom and they cool now, you know, we, I'm gonna tell you why, but they was like too much into it for me. And like, you need to do it and you gotta do this and gotta do this. And I'm like, yo, I was doing stuff before this and it was working for me. You know, I was in a good position and spirit told me to do it. So that's why I did it. So fast forward, right? The Baba kissed my friend in the mouth and said her mama was too old, but he was going to marry her mama. Like he was on some BS. He was on some collect a bunch of women. And so I started to find out information like a lot of the Babas was scamming people and doing all this kind of crazy stuff, especially in Atlanta, the home of the scammer or scammer, they was, religion was a new thing. Like, and they knew that people wanted fame, people wanted money. And so they was using this spirituality to get people into, to get people money basically and get them into the tribe and they got to spend more money. And I wound up meeting other people um, that were giving me stories like randomly on what was going on with they Baba and all of that. So it kind of just made me be like, I wasn't messing with him. I didn't go back. I didn't go back and get my initiation. I haven't seen that man since this day. I blocked that man. And then after maybe like a year later, the girl told me about her and her mom and him kissing her and making her feel uncomfortable. And then I wound up telling her how much he wanted to charge me. And she told me how much he charged her. And I was like, so he seen money around me. So he thought he was going to get me. He didn't see no money around you. So he just made you pay this you know, this little chump change, basically compared to 7,000, like 500, 1,500, that's chump change, basically, right? And so, you know, to fast forward, 
she stopped dealing with him. I haven't heard anything about him, but I always wonder like, why does spirit want me to take this initiation, right? Well, it opened up so many doors for me. You know, um, I do feel like my life changed after that, as far as like spirituality, a lot of things kind of opened up for me. I became more set into, actually, I feel like the vegan foodie kind of progressed after that or whatever. I don't even know the vegan foodie was created then. I don't, I don't know. I can't remember. No, the vegan foodie was created, but the vegan foodie wasn't wasn't where it is now. So a lot of things have changed about me since my initiation. Um, and I have connected with a lot of people. Like I, one time I was at um, BT weekend and I ran into Coach K. He saw my bracelet and, you know, he showed me mad love. And so, you know, I have benefited from doing my initiation now that I have traveled to other countries. Um, you know, I, I've gotten a chance to, you know, witness other babas and witness you know spirituality on that level so i will say that it was something that was good for me but i was able to see like it really opened up my eyes to how people scam in spirituality you know and so i didn't fall for anything you know and that was like my first time and i actually realized that how powerful i was spiritually in that situation you know because um, with the readings and with, you know, like him asking me for money and just all of those things, it made me realize where I was at and that I wasn't vulnerable and I wasn't weak and I wasn't clinging to anything just for money, just for fame, just for recognition, just for a better life, because I already was manifesting that. And so with my initiation, you know, it just, it just helped me to be able to fine tune spiritually where I was and where I'm going. And so, you know, I still wear my bracelet to this day. Um, and, and I'm very proud of my bracelet. I'm very proud of my initiation. Um, like I said, my life changed since then. Who I was before is not who I am now spiritually. I feel like when, when I took my initiation, Oshun started to work with me more. Shango worked with me more. Um, Alegwa worked with me more. Abatala Ogun, 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 you know, I was able to kind of work with my ancestors better and it just kind of helped me. And I really feel like even with my initiation, it led me to Nigeria or whatever, because it was kind of like, that's, that's a big part of the culture there as well. And I feel like, um, I started to embrace my goddessness more because before I, I didn't, I didn't have this goddess edge as much as I have now. I don't feel like I was shining as bright as I was. So, you know, there was something good in that, but you know, there was a little drawback. So I just want to tell people, you know, when you're going to your initiation, just be mindful. Don't be gullible. Do your research, know who you're dealing with. And if spirit don't tell you to do it, don't do it. If spirit tells you to do it, do it. And if spirit tells you to pay, you pay. If spirit don't tell you to pay or make you second guess, then you second guess. This is, this is even though, you know, you going to somebody that may have a lot of knowledge and experience more than you, that doesn't mean that you don't have it in you, you know? And that's what it taught me too. Like, this person wasn't bigger than me. This person wasn't greater than me. This person was just in that same walk. But, you know, there are some people who use it for good and some people who use it for bad. So I was just able to just kind of decipher where I was. Hopefully you'll be able to decipher where you are because I know that, you know, spirituality is really big now and a lot of people are, you know, using it for the right things, but it's a lot of people using it for the wrong things. So, you know, if you come across this video, hopefully this video helps you. Hopefully this video gives you insight and you know what's really good, you know, because everything ain't peaches and cream in the spirituality, but everything is meant to be if it's meant to be for you. All right. So anyway, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on all social media platforms, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. I'm their baby except for Biko because it's ghetto and I don't like that. But anyway, this video is just for you to get a peek on my life and what it was like with me taking my initiation into EFI. And like I said, if this is something that you want to do, just let spirit speak to you first. 
don't fall into the hoopla and don't let nobody scam you when it comes to spirituality because people be scamming and for real for real like them people that be in the dms i don't trust them i one time i paid somebody 30 dollars just to see just because i knew they was on some bullshit but i just wanted to i had the third i said let me just she when she called me it was kids crying in the background i knew she needed that money so i was like you know what let me just give you this money you know just because spirit told me to give it to you i'm gonna give it to you but was i really needing her mm -mm, i wasn't just be mindful in spirituality and also be safe out here protect yourself because spirituality is real and people really be doing stuff you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people out there that's oblivious or ignorant to the fact and don't really know it is real deal and people use it for good and people use it for bad. All right. Anyway, that's it. I'm out of here. Peace.